Well, good, good, good afternoon. Uh, it's Charlie here. Just um, got back off yet another another trip and uh, managed to find some time to sit down and have a bit of a, um, a play with this amplifier. Um, you may recall from the last video that um, I was using a uh, another little junk box amplifier um, that I had lying around just to do that sort of quick on-air check. But the uh, the aim was always to to have a look at this amplifier, which um, came off an old 19 or late 1970s radio. Uh, which I had in the junk box, and I sort of wanted to pull it apart and and have a look at um, and ba you know, basically uh, reusing some of the power transistors. So this is the um, the circuit for it here. Um, this whole board here uh, included everything essentially that you can see on the screen there. So uh, you can see here the two. Uh, well, in fact, here, here is the um, the driver stage. Um, two small bipolar junction transistors. Um, those those two here, driving a small push-pull driver amp, which are these two here, uh, into the main power amplifier here. So those two devices are these two here, with the output transformer here. Um, what I elected to do, um, I have stripped off all of the biasing network, and that was basically all through here, and over the back here. Um, I've taken that all out, um, and replaced it with a, um, a very simple biasing um, circuit. So what we're essentially left with at the moment, or at the moment, um, is something that looks uh, like that. Um, so basically just back to, to bare bones. Um, at the stage I've left in those, that small um, pre-driver circuit, um, or what it's called here, the input stage of the circuit diagram. Um, uh, just debating if I'm going to leave that in circuit or actually take that fully out. Um, I'll probably end up taking it fully out and using a BD139 in here and we'll look at designing that up um, to provide that sort of drive current through this transformer here to, to basically um, excite the, the drive circuit. Um, this here is pretty well intact. Um, I've left this um, feedback circuit on the back at this stage, um, an RLC. Um, no change there. On this side, of course, we'll talk about the biasing in a sec. Um, no changes here leading into the main power amplifier. Um, uh, yeah, that's probably about all. I did uh, take away one of the um, the transformers back here, and I just made a very simple circuit at the moment. So the output drives this output transformer, and I've left this one here, the center tap one, to provide the VCC through to uh, the two collectors. Now, for the uh, the biasing itself, um, decided to sort of use the old KISS, keep it simple, um, just a, uh, a 1N4001 uh, diode, um, forward biased by a resistor, um, and then that's decoupled by a 1 microfarad and 100 nanofarad capacitor, and then that bias uh, current coming off is then what you see here and here. So the two biasing networks for both the driver and the PA stage are exactly the same. Um, the uh, the manual for that particular radio, um, the trade manual for tuning it up, um, said best to have a quiescent current here with no signal coming in between 50 and 75 milliamps, and then for the power amplifier, the quiescent current through uh, was between 170 and uh, 200 milliamps. And just basically through a, um, a process of trial and error, um, for the driver stage it works out to be roughly 470 ohms and then for the power amplifier stage um, 1.5 for a start I'm actually down to um, uh, 1 uh, K ohm now which is sitting up around uh, just on 200 milliamps and that's what you can see just sort of sitting off to one side here um, those biasing wires are, are way too long but this is just for testing purposes so you can see there the two, the two uh, diodes and their respective uh, resistors and the decoupling capacitors um, just feeding those two uh, amplifier stages. So um, at the moment if we just do a couple of, uh, couple of checks um, so what we have here just a, uh, a simple SIG gen being fed straight into the input um, through a 3db pad just to, to try and present a good sort of 50 ohm load or input I should say uh, for those two um, transistors and then the output is going through a simple um, 
80 metre or cut off about 4 megahertz uh, low pass filter and then um, straight out the antenna socket and then out into um, the dummy load. Uh, so it's currently on dummy load and just we can just read the voltage there and then we can actually have also at the same time um, the oscope monitoring the output. So if we just arc that up, um, so that's now uh, on and keyed and you can see there that's sitting up on around uh, 20 watts so it's 30 watts there, 50 watts and we'll go any further which I don't really want to do at this stage of the game. Um, so I had that up to 100 watts quite nicely, um, I don't particularly want to leave it there for too long but the aim, what I do want to do with this circuit is to uh, have, I'd like to have around 20 watts. Um, I don't particularly want to have much more than that. Um, maybe perhaps 30, but I'm sort of quite happy with 20. So um, for next steps, um, what I want to do is continue uh, tearing this down. I'm quite keen to basically pull these two um, uh, transformers out and then look to uh, wind my own, potentially using you know, some of these little binocular core um, uh, ferrites. Uh, I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be driving this up to 100 watts. I'm pretty happy that at 20 watts, I should be able to get away with something um, significantly smaller. But we'll just play it by ear. The whole idea is just to sort of play around and experiment to to see uh, what can be done or can't be done. Um, this obviously needs to be all tidied up, so I'll probably just look at uh, moving those uh, very close to their respective um, transistors. Um, I'm probably going to keep this board for the moment. Um, the only reason for that is, uh, it, you know, this heatsink here comes with the board, um, so all the cutouts are nicely lined up with your attaching screws, so it just makes life a heck of a lot easier, um, uh, rather than making my own. But that will be, um, an end goal would be to uh, transfer all of these across to uh, another circuit board made up and then milled out um, as a long term option. But again this is just purely just playing around, pulling this apart, um, getting it back to sort of bare bones configuration uh, just to work out uh, what sort of, not so much the minimum but just sort of a nice simple uh, bare bones push pull amplifier. And like I say if I can get around 20 watts out I'll be quite happy. Um, that's sort of where I'm sort of aiming for. Um, we talked about sort of probably redoing this input stage here, um, probably replace that by a BD139. Uh, perhaps probably needs a uh, maybe a 2N3053 or a, a, a 3904 um, driver into that BD139 uh, just to get that driving nice and to get enough current going through uh, that transformer to excite um, that driver stage. But uh, again, that's all about sort of playing around and experimenting. Um, other than that, uh, probably not too much else to talk about. Um, just double check. No, nope, I think that's about all actually. So, um, you have to go disappear for another couple of days uh, later on this week. But, like I say, we'll, uh, we'll keep pulling this apart. And, and if something's of interest, we'll put a video up and um, we'll go from there. So the thoughts are now starting to change. We'll think about uh, the next radio. Um, been reading a book uh, about uh, QRP and which had some pretty good chapters on um, the various bands and the pros and cons of each band. So um, I'm sort of starting to think I might actually build up a, a 40 meter rig, but uh, we'll see where we go with that one. Okay, 73 is all. Um, any questions, sing out. Otherwise, let's keep uh, melting solder.